Welcome to lab six. This will be measuring the pulse parameter of a pulse laser. For simplicity again, here we'll be using a CW laser and use a chopper to create pulses. A pulse laser is much more efficient than a CW laser. This you can read in the module 1.6. It is very, very important because Normally, in a laser, the entire efficiency of the laser is not utilized because the gain does not coincide with the maximum power output. The details of this you can read in the module 1.6. So, if it is possible to use a shutter and try to not allow the multiple reflection to take place, you can wait until the gain is maximum, then you can open the shutter such that a pulse, giant pulse will be given. Uh, this is how pulse lasers are produced. The greatest advantage of the pulse lasers is that these pulses can be very nicely adjusted for their width, their duration, their height, and so on and so forth. Therefore, a pulse laser is much, much more efficient. Well, pulse lasers typically are more expensive too. So for instance, the pulse YAG laser is a very, very important laser used in many surgeries and other medical applications. And we will be doing the experiment to illustrate the how the pulse parameters can be changed. So first and foremost, let us look at the first slide in which a pulse strain is shown. In this pulse strain, you can see that one first, second one, third one, there are three pulses. If you take a measurement from the beginning of the first pulse to the beginning of the second pulse, we call that as pulse repetition time. The maximum height of the pulse, we call it as Pmax or the maximum power. The area under the pulse is the energy of the pulse which is usually not constant in shape, but by and large, the energy will be quite stable. Another parameter is the width of this pulse at the half the height of this uh, total pulse. This is called full width at half maximum, and this is the called delta T half also. The same pulse is shown here in an enlarged fashion. And if you approximate the pulse shape to that of a triangle, the area of the triangle, which is the half time the base times the maximum P, that gives us the area of the uh, pulse. So that also gives us the energy of the pulse. Therefore, if it is possible for us to stimulate this one and produce a number of pulses and measure the PRT and the full width at half maximum, if we can measure those two things, all the other parameters can be measured very well. We will now show the equations and then we'll come back to the equations also a little bit. The first thing is energy E is shown to be delta T half times P maximum, or it can also be written as P average times the PRT. You can do either one of them. So therefore, in an experimental parameter, if you can measure the PRT and you can measure delta T half, you can measure the energy. Since an oscilloscope does not measure power, it simply measures the voltage, the best one to do is measure the times, that is the PRT and the delta T half. Both are time measurements. You can measure it on the oscilloscope. And from that, you can get the energy. From that, you can get the P maximum. And once you know the P maximum and you also know the energy, PRT, if the reciprocal of PRT is pulse repetition rate, we can measure that also. And the DC called the duty cycle, we can calculate that also. Here's the experimental setup that is shown, which we'll be seeing in a few minutes. We have a laser, a CW laser, like a continuous laser, like a helium neon or a diode, what we can choose anything we like. We have a chopper whose speed can be varied so that the 
beam can be cut a number of times per second, which produces the pulses. Since these choppers have got nice uh, rectangular serrations on it, so we will get nice pulses one after the other. And then we have a detector. This detector can measure these pulses, and that is connected to an oscilloscope. Uh, this need not be a very expensive oscilloscope. This is simple, ordinary oscilloscope where you can display these pulses and voltages is more than enough. So, and also, there are oscilloscopes where you can have another uh, place where you can measure the P average itself. If the oscilloscope which you have does not have that, you just remove the detector and connect it to a ordinary voltmeter, which will show you, a power meter will show you P in uh, watts. So the result is shown here as a picture on the oscilloscope. You can see these pulses. And by adjusting the chopper speed, you would get different number of pulses for a given time. And you can measure from here to here. That gives you PRT. And at the half the height, if you measure, this will give you delta T half. So in the experiment, what is done is the chopper speeds are kept at different speeds so that we can get pulses of different PRTs and T half. And then use again the equations because we can measure P average and we can measure PRT and delta T half. All the three we can measure. So if you have P average times the delta T half, that gives you energy. From that, you can calculate the P maximum. And from PRT, you can calculate what PRR because 1 over PRT is PRR and then duty cycle, which is the P average over P maximum. So this gives you an idea how the pulse widths can be varied, the duty cycle can be varied, PRT can be varied, therefore PRR will be varied, varied. And then we can actually shape these pulses whichever way we want. So as I, again, I'll conclude this part of it by saying that a pulse laser is much, much more easy to accommodate the any requirements that a particular uh, application requires.